all of my queen bee bakers now i have a fun treat for you guys and this is a candy apple this is a chocolate apple and this is some fondant so thanks to my girl calico cakes az uh, molds and i'll have her information below i got to try out this mermaid tail mold and i did a little bit of like a watercolor effect on the tail i love the scale so i just wanted to try that out on fondant it worked the method that i'm going to be showing you guys so that was pretty cool so all i did was add some vodka or rum i mean the clear alcohol kind and a little bit of gel color and all I did was put a little bit in my vodka or rum or alcohol solution and just mix the gel color. Let it sit for like five minutes while you're mixing it. And then I got a bunch of sponges from the dollar store. I cut them in fours. So I have these sponges to use. Now on the chocolate, I didn't think it was going to work. So of course I was like, oh, skeptical. Let me show you how this works on chocolate because i've tried it before and it and it really was uh different so all right so what you want to do is you want to get a little bit on the sponge like that and then you want to rub it in like that and then do this little like motion like that and it'll leave a little bit of a stain and then you just go to your next sponge or whatever color you want to use and do the same thing you're just going to it's okay if it leaves a little bit of a drip it's not going to dissipate fast because this is chocolate and we all know chocolate and alcohol and or water they don't mix so you literally have to just like push it in there and then don't be afraid to go over the other colors you want that effect now, there's no really big ratio when it comes to the alcohol and the colors. It's just how deep and how um, how deep you want it or how thick or thin. It's really completely up to you. I literally put like a drop of each color in each one of these. Again, it's completely up to you. And you're literally, literally just going in there i mean and you still might have some on the sponge that you might not have to double dip in there again i love these sponges so you're just really just going over the colors now you can be dramatic and <laughs> go over the color like that i mean it's just whatever you feel like you want to do and this is a solid chocolate so keep that in mind and if you want to go in and put a little color somewhere where there wasn't or say you want to put some blue in there, you can. It looks really cool and it looks really awesome. So you can try that really cool color effect with all these colors. Don't be afraid. Just try it. You know, if you use one or two apples, I say that's an investment that you're trying um, to use a new technique and the apples that you ruined or that you learned from is an investment. It's not, you didn't waste anything. You're learning. So how cool is that apple look? Perfect for Easter too. Let's see. So alternate colors. I mean, you don't have to keep doing the same colors if you want to do different brighter colors. You can go ahead and do that as well. Just be creative. Have fun with it. Give it a nice um, watercolor tie-dye effect. Go in there and just have fun with the apple. So this is all chocolate. I'm really loving how this came out. So make sure you use a sponge. Like These are like really thick sponges. So here is our candy apple. I'm going to do the back. And you would do the same and get the same effect. Or you can drip it on there or spatter or this, however you want to do. Again, it's literally up to you, however you want to do it. Just know whatever, if it's a circle sponge, it's going to leave a circle 
um, imprint on the candy apple versus the chocolate. You can spread it a little more. Um, but on the candy apple, because of the candy mixture and stickiness, it will leave a, a little bit of an imprint. But you can move that and work with it. I think this gives it more of a watercolor effect. If you put a lot and you just let it drip like that, again, completely up to you, whatever you want to do, like so. I think that looks pretty cool. So again, you can overdo it, but remember on the candy apple, it's going to be a little different when it's drying because it's going to take a little longer. You're introducing wet into the sugar so just keep that in mind so i mean completely up to you however you want to do your apple be creative have fun with it i really like how the chocolate one came out and also send me your pictures candyqueenbebaker at gmail.com or um, leave them up on the website there's a section or send me a message or a comment or tag me on Instagram. I really love sharing your guys' work. So let me know how this goes for you. And if you have another or different tutorial. Um, same goes for the fondant. Same thing. You want to use way less on the fondant. Because you don't want the fondant to become sticky. Alright. So I hope that helps you guys out. And before I forget. We also have um, chocolate covered pretzel same thing you're gonna do the same thing and you don't want to put that much obviously and I do have a class on uh, chocolate covered pretzels and it goes in depth about caramel and how to wrap it and much much more so I'll have all that information in the description box below so you're gonna do the same thing that you did with the apple how fun is this? This is great for Easter. And you can also, you know, rub it with your fingers. But sometimes rubbing it with your fingers may take the whole color off. So make sure you use the sponge. Sponge is always your best bet. So completely up to you how you want to decorate it. I mean, Easter is almost, I mean, Easter is every year. So you could use this technique every year. How fun is that? All right, now I hope you guys have so much fun creating all this new stuff. Don't forget, go to the website if you would like to take the pretzel class or any of my classes that are more in depth and send me an email or leave a comment. All right, my Queen Bee Bakers, until next time.